Hi, I'm Steve, and this is the Alt-Alt Hub and Suspension Bearing Press System. Yeah, the bearing press system got a little bit out of hand, but I wanted it to do everything that a bearing press could. Yeah, and the video got out of hand too. When I first released the suspension bearing press, customers immediately asked, will it work on hubs? Well, the answer is no. But I guess if you're riding enough to be swapping out suspension bearings, you're definitely riding enough to be swapping out hubs as well. And since the suspension press already covers a lot of the same bearing sizes that hubs and free hubs use, maybe I just need to add some parts to expand its capabilities. Wow. So if the goal is to expand the suspension bearing press so that it can work on hubs as well as free hubs, install and removal. There's a few things to consider. For hubs, you have to consider front hubs, rear hubs. There's open bore designs, there's over axle designs. For disc brake mounts, there's center lock and there's six bolt. You have to consider the through axle. There's 12, 15, and 20 millimeter standards. Then for the free hubs, there's three basic body shapes. There's the XD and XDR, which are very similar. There's micro spline, and then there's HG. Now, even within those standards, the manufacturers tend to do their own thing because it seems like no two designs are the same. So this is gonna to have to be a pretty versatile kit. Let's see how to make it work. Let's start by exploring an over axle hub to see what parts we need. The bearings are pressed into the hub from either side and retain the axle in place. To remove the first bearing, normally the manufacturer recommends hitting the axle with a mallet and driving out the first bearing. And if you don't do this very often, it's a little bit nerve wracking because it takes a pretty confident whack to make it happen. So pressing it out is a way more controllable method. So we're going to press out the axle and first bearing by leveraging against the disc side of the hub. We'll use the sleeve six for six bolt designs. You can use the sleeve six either with or without the disc mounted. Oh, and I guess we're going to need a longer stud. So after setting up the tool, the stud moves around inside the axle too much for my liking. Using the tool when it's crooked on the hub or on your bike frame may damage the tool. But a crooked tool may be making the bearing crooked. If you continue like that, you might damage your bike. To make sure that the tool stays centered on the hub, we'll use a pilot inside the axle. Slide the pilot onto the stud and keep it in place with an O-ring. We'll need a second pilot for the other end. Install the sleeve six onto the disc end of the hub and now the tool is nicely centered. Put another fastener on the stud and start tightening the tool. Using pilots and the other parts of the system that have centering functionality mean that this tool can be centered for all applications. Once you feel the bearing come out, the tool can be disassembled and the first bearing and axle come out of the hub. Let's add the sleeve six, the longer stud, a second set of pilots and some O-rings to the system. For center lock disc mounts, we can leverage the removal of the axle with the long sleeve. This part has the advantage of not only leveraging, but also of centering. To use the long sleeve, you do have to remove the disc but in most cases you had to do that anyways to get the bearing out. Add the sleeve long. And because you never know what the manufacturers are going to recommend, we should have the capability to press the axle and first bearing out of the drive side as well. We'll use the stop OAL for that. Add the stop OAL. Now to press out the second hub bearing, We're going to need the help of the spacer tube to reach inside the hub. 
add the spacer tube. Now for install. When installing the first bearing, we'll use the stop center on the opposite side of the hub for leveraging and centering. Add the stop CTR. For the second bearing of the over axle hub, the axle's in the way. So this requires an over axle drift to reach over the axle and press in the bearing. Manufacturers often recommend installing the second bearing using the first bearing installed as leverage. So you'll need two over axle drifts. One short, one long. I, I sell these individually as a kit containing two parts of one size. You get two of the same size, only one is longer. I've also designed the over axle drifts to have a flat side and a step side in case your manufacturer recommends pressing just the bearing outer ring. And watch out for this sneaky shit. In this hub, the bearing sits on a stepped part of the axle. If you size the over axle drift to the bearing OD and ID, the over axle drift would not be centered and would flop around on the axle. So you have to size the over axle drift to the OD of the bearing and the OD of the axle part that you'll be pressing over. That keeps everything centered so the bearing goes in nice and straight. Add the over axle drifts. And you're likely to run into what I like to call a BSB configuration. This is when you have two bearings separated by an internal spacer. This is common on hubs, free hubs, and suspension like on either side of a seat post or on a linkage. Looking at the BSB configuration of this free hub, you can see that the inner bearing spacer is flush with the ID of the bearings. That leaves nothing to press up against to remove the bearing. Now there is a lot more information about removing that first bearing than we have time to talk about today, but let's just say that I want to be able to remove that in a much more controlled fashion. If we can move that inner spacer off to the side a little bit, it exposes a little bit of the inner bearing ring on the far bearing. And if that's the case, then we can use the alt drift to press that bearing out. This is how the alt drift applies force to the bearing inner ring. The alt drift contacts the bearing inner ring off to one side. And as you tighten the tool, the alt drift applies force in this direction that varies as you turn around the stud. Let's use the alt drift to remove the outboard bearing in this free hub. That's the first bearing to be removed. To do that, insert the alt drift into the opposite side of the free hub and press the inner bearing spacer off to the side. Then push the alt drift up against the back side of the bearing. And then using a pilot, center the tool onto the bearing. Now I just like to use an O-ring here to keep the pilot in place and I'm using the tube spacer to put it on. Next we need to apply some leverage to the free hub body so we're going to use the stop OAL. It's sized to fit the XD and XDR free hub bodies. I'm going to need a fastener on this end so I'm using the stud stop to make quick work of this. Do not tighten up this end of the tool. Only tighten the alt drift using this end. When tightening the alt drift, you'll feel when the bearing comes out because the tool becomes effortless to turn. This is a really controllable way to confidently remove the spacer and bearing. Add the alt drift. Currently, I need you home mechanics to help beta test this tool. So I'm offering it at a discount to get some much needed feedback. And considering every manufacturer designs their parts with different size bearings, we're going to have to add a few more sizes to the system. We're going to have to add some more pilots, some more alt drifts, and just a couple more over axle drifts. Okay, so at this point it's probably worth mentioning that like the original suspension bearing press, I've tried to keep this system as inexpensive as possible. To create a system that is more based on function rather than flair, some things have had to be sacrificed. For the parts, anything that didn't need to be made out of aluminum, I've made out of acetal, which is a strong engineering thermoplastic. 
it doesn't need to be anodized, and it's real gentle on the bike parts. For the pressing action, I've used a simple stainless steel threaded stud with zinc plated steel nuts. And I've even kept the packaging super simple. Nope. This is going to need a little bit of tweaking. Let's put the whole system on a stand to keep things reasonably organized. And when you're working on small parts with such a long stud, there's an unnatural amount of this going on. So I've included a stud stop. Used instead of the non-tightening nut, it slides into place quickly, and then when squared up on the stud, it locks into place. You'll thank me later. And finally, if you're the kind of mechanic who likes a little bit of convenience, I've made this cherry matte finish anodized aluminum handle to make wrenching a little bit easier. It's not necessary, but it's pretty sweet. And it comes in three colors. It comes in soup, soup. Soup de jour. Oh, that's stupid. Soup de jour. That's silly. It comes in sand de jour. <laughs> sand de jour. Organic cardboard. And my personal favorite, dry hero dirt. Current production limitations. Only the dry hero dirt color will be available for the foreseeable future. This system has a lot of capability for a bearing press. But not everybody's going to need the whole thing. So I'm going to split it up into more manageable kits. This is the whole system. And this is how it's all split up into kits and parts. If you're a small shop, this is what you're going to need for the whole system. But if you're a home mechanic, you won't need all the over axle drifts. So you can get those individually by size in a kit containing a long and a short over axle drift. That handle isn't totally necessary or bare bones, so it's sold separately. And because not everybody is going to need the alt drift, it's sold separately as a kit but it comes in two versions. The Alt-D1 kit contains the Alt drifts and the Alt rod, but it needs to be used with the other parts in the HSBP-1 or the original suspension bearing press. While the Alt-D-2 is a totally standalone kit, which contains all the parts that you're going to need to remove the first bearing in a BSB configuration. This kit is for those of you who already have other bearing presses. If you already have the original suspension bearing press and want to upgrade to be able to work on hubs, you can expand the suspension bearing press with the HSBP-1X. This is an expansion kit. It contains everything to change the suspension bearing press kit to the HSBP-1 main kit, but doesn't include the stud stop. Many customers who originally got the suspension bearing press already purchased the stud stop. So the stud stop is sold separately. This is an extremely versatile bearing press system that works in many situations by positioning individual parts together to either remove or install bearings. Because it relies on using the right part at the right time, it's important to approach this task from the fundamentals of bearing swaps. So head over to the how-to section of altalt.ca, not only to learn how to use the system, but why. Then check out the instructional diagrams to find out how to put all the tool parts together for every situation. If you're interested in buying an extremely versatile, bare bones, inexpensive, hub, free hub, and suspension bearing press system, then head on over to the buy section of altalt.ca. P.S. Watch Instagram for product notifications and check out the Alt Alt YouTube channel for some upcoming videos where I'll be doing a bunch of bearing swaps and sharing some tips. Happy wrenching.